Comment line subject, rape. Shirley, did you have thoughts? Uh, yes. Uh, first of all, I want to say I don't believe in capital punishment no. or anything. But uh, I think if, if someone is convicted of rape, I think they should, you know, be rehabilitated or, or at least they should. Because I think it's a sickness no matter who does it. Right. Um, and one lady called it a meanness. Well, to me, I think they're sick in order to be mean, and I think that society is made, made right. that way. And I think, I, I feel a little bit responsible because I am part of this society, so I think that they should be rehabilitated. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, you know, we get into the whole thing. We talk about rehabilitation, whether it's a, a, a criminal uh, act or a medical mm -hmm. problem, you know, and uh, in rehabilitation, I, I, from statistics that I've seen, our uh, rehabilitative efforts in prison systems have not really it's worked. Yeah, so you know, that it's, is not... It's not really a case of rehabilitation when a person is in prison, it's just incarceration. Then we, we have to work on our prisons then. Right, right. So, uh, that's about all I wanted to say. I just felt like I should say that. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Shirley. Bye-bye. Your thoughts on uh, our subject, rape, Rose? Well, first of all, I'd like to make a comment from two angles. Okay. I am a woman, a very much a woman. I am not an old fuddy-duddy. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the latest styles in clothes, but I go into the supermarkets and the suburbs. And the other day, I was down in the city of Louisville, and I could not believe how some women go on the streets dressed. Of course, they say that no woman, no matter what she wears, should be subject to rape. But I do feel that a lot of people don't leave a lot hidden. Right. Do you think some women, the way they dress, are contributory to uh, rape? I certainly do. Now, I don't feel that, I feel that there should be punishment for rape. I don't feel that there is a punishment good enough to rape a child. Mm -hmm. And I also feel that, for instance, if this unfortunate thing were to happen to me, I would have to go out and get my own lawyer at my expense. So many we read about today, whether it be rape or whatever, is provided a free lawyer, mind you, the best in the city. Mm -hmm. And I feel that anyone who goes out thinking this way think, oh, well, if I get caught, uh, what am I going to lose? You mean the rapist? That's right. Yeah. That's right. And, and I do not feel, I don't care what they do, that they should be given a free lawyer. For instance, when my husband died a few years ago, I paid an attorney several thousand dollars to settle this for me. I had this to do. And within a month, uh, two policemen were brutally slain in Louisville. And eventually the court appointed this lawyer that I had paid several thousand dollars to to settle my husband's estate, they gave this, the services of this very same man to one of those who supposedly did this. And I don't think this is fair. I think they should have to pay their own way. Mm -hmm. So you would be against uh, court-appointed attorneys uh, for, for defense? Definitely. What about uh, the, the prosecutor who was serving, you know, in the prosecution case as a public uh, official? Of course, he hears both sides, right? But he is primarily concerned with prosecution. Right. I just, I just feel that if I have to, to pay a lawyer to support me because I have been raped or my child has, that they should have to do the same thing. I don't care where they live. I don't care well, what their income is, whatever. Yeah. Normally, though, in a... In a legal proceeding, it would be the prosecutor who would handle your case as opposed to you seeking a private uh, attorney. I, I, I'm pretty sure. Oh, well, this I don't know, but I know in so many it's not a, It's not a really a civil case. It's a, it's a, a, a police case, a, a legal proceeding. Right. As right. opposed to a civil case. Right. Well, I still feel that women could watch the dress. Mm -hmm. really? oh, okay, yeah, but the whole society is on being beautiful. 
right? Yeah. Right. Today, the whole the whole thing in society is that men and women should be beautiful people. That's right. Be uh, natural, uh, but you don't have to be nude to be beautiful. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you can dress nice. Uh, be conservative, you know. Yeah. In your dress. Now, I don't mean go around with ruffles down to your to your to the ground. I don't do this. You know. Yeah. Um, and I like to wear the latest styles and this, that, and the other. And, and uh, but I do really feel, even at the ballpark and the supermarkets, I see women. I think, you know, I can't believe this. It's worse this year than it than it was last. You know, it's getting worse all the time. Well, what? And I, I think when you walk the streets with very little on, you're saying, "Look at me," you know. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but but that's what what uh, in a, you know a good deal of society we're saying with with uh, with our dress you know in general not just women but but everything you know uh, what would you consider to be over enticement in dress? Okay, I have seen just in the last month women in supermarkets in line with halters on with nothing underneath. There was nothing you couldn't see. And I, I think this is wrong. I think this is too extreme. You see them downtown. I saw one downtown day before yesterday. Just a strip across the top. Nothing underneath. That's it. But isn't, isn't that a common mode of attire? Uh, well, it's getting more so. And there's also getting more rape, more rape. And you I'm think this saying is this is what's causing it. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I'm, I'm saying that I, I want to dress the latest, and my weakness is clothes. Yeah. But I don't want to say to everybody that's standing on the corner looking for a stray woman, you know? Right. Well, there's an obvious one. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Jim Ferguson show for a Sunday afternoon, our comment line subject, rape. Rose, your thoughts? Okay, I have been listening to some of those ladies, and I personally, I was involved in an attempted rape. Uh, someone broke into my apartment while I was in it. Mm -hmm. and, um, I'm a quite strong person, and uh, I fought my way through. And the man was trying to choke me. He was trying. I was screaming, and he told me that he would kill me unless I quit. And he was trying to put a pillow over my face, and it slipped, and I got his hand in my face and bit the daylight out of it. <laughs> in fact, it was bleeding when he was leaving, mm -hmm. and it did not come to the to the ray and he was le you know I made him leave the apartment but I know one thing I mean I don't really believe in capital punishment but if this if this should happen again there will be capital punishment in my apartment <laughs> I really mean it right now I am prepared for the case I had identified the person to the police I had seen the man about a month later in a car it took the police 3 days before they made, a, made an arrest. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, the man was being let out. You know, he was arrested, they kept him overnight, and he was being let out on bail. Okay, this boy is 19 years old. I am 35. I am divorced. And I really was so very angry about it all, and I thought, I'm going to follow through with the court and everything. But as it ended up, um, well, they were trying to get him for breaking and entering. Nothing was stolen. They couldn't really get him on rape. Not even attempted rape? Well, they could get him on attempted rape, which would probably be a suspended sentence, is what it ended up to be. And I would have made a complete scandal. I am a teller in a bank, and I could not really afford a scandal. Being divorced, people would say, hmm, hmm. Right. In fact, he had to bite his hand to get him into, into the apartment, yes or no. You know, did you bite his hand? I mean, I have watched Kojak and Barry Mason <laughs> really know what's going on. But there's a, there's a certain protocol that a young lady has to go through when she's raped. Yeah, that's right. She can't, but I, she can't do nothing because then, you know, it's not for sure that it was rape. So she has to resist to a certain point or continue to resist. Right. You know, it's just, <laughs> it's the code of the road. Yeah, but you know, like in my case, okay, I fought the guy off, but I was, I thought, my idea was, I mean, I was, my, I mean, he slapped me around, I had a 
swollen jaw and a busted lip and so forth. But he was bleeding. I guess I must have bit so hard. He told me, in fact, if I was not turning loose, he would kill me. But I knew going away he couldn't kill me with one hand. <laughs> and, I mean, I wouldn't turn loose of that hand until he was at the door. It was right now when I think about it, it's quite humorous. But, you know, uh, the thing is, though, I called the police immediately just for one reason. This man knew that I have called the police. Right. I mean, for him to come back on it, you know, that I was not chicken enough for that. You know, right. otherwise I would have been afraid that he might show up again. And I live on a downstairs base. Um, my bedroom door goes all the way out to the backyard. And I had seen this man come in, but for some reason I did not turn my back toward him. In fact, I got out of my bed and turned on the big light and asked him what he wanted. And that, of course, he told me. I thought, what well, stupid me? Why should I ask? <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, you're one in a million. Uh, I think you you handle it beautifully. Some women, you know, may not be in that much control at that particular point. Yeah, but you'd be amazed what strength you will have during that time. I mean, afterwards, I broke down and cried. And uh, but right now, I mean, I have I have a bottle of maize right on my nightstand. And I have more locks in my building. I mean, if I want to get some fresh air, I have to get the key to unlock my window. <laughs> I mean, I don't, you know, really, I am prepared now for the case. I really am. It's like uh, when you, you know, if you realize when you finally get prepared, it'll never happen, right? Well, I never thought it would happen to me in the first place. Yeah. I'm one of those people where, you know, I live in a protected town. Of course, our police, our, pol our whole police department is more like Mayberry RFD. Yeah, come on, Rose, come on. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> really, I thought, and when I seen this man, I thought the police should take immediate action. Yeah. I thought I might have to make the arrest myself. <laughs> I'm not kidding. In fact, I mean, I have only one fear. This man's suspended sentence is just about up. And I think... I have faced him since that in our town here, and uh, I mean, the thing was, I did not want to go to court. I chickened out on it, you know, was just settled out of court because I knew nothing would nothing would really happen. All I would do is ruin my reputation in front of everybody, right. and uh, I could not afford the scandal. But the thing is, I have the revenge in mind because it does something mentally to you. This happened approximately a year ago, and. Uh, I know it just does something mentally to you. It really does. Even so, it did not come to the to the point. It just it just the scare you would have. I mean, like I said, I couldn't scream. I made a sound like a retarded person would make. You know, it just it was not a scream at first. Mm -hmm. You know, it just you know just the fear of it. And I thought, well, I can't identify him. I see him in the bright light. You know, I mm -hmm. thought he might go ahead and try to do something to me or my son. In fact, my son was sleeping in the room next door and did not, well, it takes him a while to get up. And I thought, well, on break and entering, they couldn't have just gotten him on that because this man was for five minutes at my apartment, right? Right. There has to be some kind of explanation. And uh, I think the police is sort of protecting the man who is doing something like that. Now, this man has tried this. But what would happen to him? He can try it over and over again. Right. Well, we talked about that uh, perhaps in our uh, <clears throat> desire to protect the innocent, that sometimes we go so far in the opposite extreme that we really don't prosecute the guilty. Rose, thank you very much for calling. Mm -hmm. You're welcome.